Hi, everyone. It's Melissa Reeves, the CEO and founder of Story Fruition, back for a very special vlogcast. I'm super excited today to introduce Gerhard De Beer, who, hey, Gerhard. Hi. <laughs> or, Thanks for hey, having De me. De Beer. He likes to go by De Beer. Yeah, everybody <laughs> likes beer, don't they? Well, for the most part. <laughs> yes, that's right. So we got to work together for a very special um, premiere that we did for Founders Live in Phoenix during the Super Bowl. And we had five professional former athletes and De Beer was one of them. Um, and what we were doing was we were doing a show basically that was from athlete to entrepreneur. Because what happens and how did you feel like when you knew it was your last game? And then what's, what's next in life? Right. You know, it's a very interesting question. You should say that. Um, I remember our college head coach, Coach Rich Rodriguez, he always said, you never know when your last game is. And for most people, it ends on their senior day. Um, but that wasn't quite true either, because on your senior day, we were about 18. Our class was over 40 kids. So we had over 40 kids as freshmen and we graduated with 18. So that means for most kids, their final game might even be in high school that they don't even get to see the field in college because either they stop playing, they transfer out and there's just turnover out the wazoo in, in, uh, in college football, uh, regardless of where you are. And now with the transfer portal, it's even more so. Uh, but uh, I don't know when I knew my last game was per se, uh, but uh, compounding back injuries over time made it significantly clear to me that I think this is the end when I struggled to get out of bed. Um, as athletes, we're used to pushing ourselves. And, uh, you know, and truly I knew at that point, you know, this is going to be it for me. But um, instead of taking millions of dollars out of the NFL and having an uncertainty for a job, I started becoming an entrepreneur and have more uncertainty of a job. <laughs> Um, and that There's was a beautiful plan, part. though. There's always a huddle. <laughs> always a huddle. Yeah, always a huddle and trying to figure out, hey, hey, uh, hey, dude, what are we doing next? Right. And so that's the problem was, uh, you know, the security behind any kind of job as an entrepreneur is a very vast uh, question for most people, especially starting a career. Um, so when I first finished playing as an NFL player, um, I was a flower delivery driver just trying to find something to do, you know, with my uncomfortable back and struggling to walk and this and that. But I had to make ends meet. Right. And I wasn't a, a draft pick that had a ton of money to fall back on. That wasn't me. So um, I had to find a way to make it work. And so I did. And uh, what happened one day, um, long story short about how I met the co-founder um, of Armilla in Germany, there was an NFL players camp where we do charity work, uh, do a couple camps and uh, try to spot young talent to potentially come and play high school ball or college ball or something like that in the U.S. and try to really broaden the game of football. Anyway, that's where I met our co-founder and he um, he told me, look, you're the only guy I trust with this. I said, OK, cool. First of all, don't tell anybody else. And uh, secondly, let me think about it and talk to my wife about it. Now, I know this is very in the dark because anybody listening to us right now, they have no clue what the heck I'm talking about. Right. Not yet. So, and we'll get we'll get to that shortly. But, yep. um, you know, that was kind of the long story behind how how Armilla came to be in my involvement with it. And so a week later, I called up the CEO. His name's Lance. And I said, you know what? All right, let's do this. He said, all right, what's next? I said, oh, I guess we need money. And so we started on our fundraising adventure and, um, you know, finished our seed round, developed the product, created a prototype. And I mean, right now we're in our true kind of series A go to market kind of environment um, of our fundraising stage where we're raising capital again. And that is purely for market growth and expansion. That is so awesome. I'm sure right now the people watching are going to be, what play? Where did he play? So tell us really uh, quickly your background yeah. as an NFL player you were with. So uh, from the University of Arizona, I was an undrafted uh, free agent to the Buffalo Bills, signed a contract there. I was on the squad week one, uh, got released from there later um, and uh, joined Green Bay. This was all in 2018, uh, week 13 of the season. Stuck around. Um, unfortunately, I joined the day or the week, rather, that uh, Mike McCarthy was let go, uh, which was uh, it was a very weird scenario. And then the coaching change brought in a scheme that I did not really work or fit with, um, unfortunately. And so that flipped as well. And then um, 
ended up getting released out of there later, joined the Colts for a week. I don't really count that. Perfect Storm, green card interview, uh, same week as I got hired. I won't got to dive into that. And then lastly, uh, joined the XFL, um, where my back started to really, really compound into a problem. And uh, I was fine throughout camp and everything, and I was making it work. And then all of a sudden, I woke up one day, and uh, I was like, man, I'm, I have a problem. Like, I, I can't get out of bed. I couldn't get in the car. Like, I sat like this, just try to fit in because I couldn't bend my spine at all. Like, it was really fun. You should definitely never, ever try that. <laughs> but, I hurt my back once, yeah. and I have such yeah. empathy for anyone who has – I mean, it's just the middle of your body, right? I mean yeah. – it it is awful. So I'm sure that was terrible. And people should probably know that when you get in a car, uh, let's see, how tall are you? You're six oh, seven. Six seven, yeah. Yeah, and then at the height of your weight for football, as it, um, as an offensive linebacker, you you reach to what what weight? As an offensive lineman, three hundred and thirty three. Yeah, three hundred and thirty three pounds. Now, yeah. granted, that I came in at two thirty. So at my heaviest, I gained over a hundred. So I was. Did at, you just eat all time. cows? Just. <laughs> <laughs> just one at a time yeah just one at a time Not one for breakfast them, one for lunch <laughs> yeah no stack protein stack you know carbs stack veggies stacked everything truly yeah and yeah. it was an uncomfortable process as well i mean trying to gain 100 pounds i mean you talk about 2013 through 2018 man it doesn't sound so bad but just keep in mind i actually went from 230 to 315 um, in the span of about two years. And so that was the rough part is it had to happen quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So an athlete's very disciplined, you know, and what do you think now? Okay. So you, an athlete, you, you were a runner prior to that discus. I mean, you've always been athletic, very coached. Um, I know that when we were working together on your, on your pitch, that you were very coachable, right? Like it was really delightful to work with you because we're going to look at your deck, the first deck that you showed me as we were getting ready for this crazy ask. We were asking you to do a 99-second pitch. Yeah, ridiculous. I mean, you <laughs> want to talk about an elevator pitch, right? I mean, hey, dude, let me take five seconds, you know, literally talk about, quote, unquote, five seconds of your time, right? 99 seconds, and you got to pitch somebody and tell them, hey, this is what I got. This is the market. This is the product. This is our sales. This is our marketing. This is our ask. And all that in 99 seconds, trying to explain that to somebody. Um, and thanks to you, it made it actually kind of easy. And to me, it, the way that you did it was really fun because you talk about telling a story. And instead of relying on my own story, focus on the story of the product and why it's important. And um, you were super helpful in that area because what it did was it helped me um, kind of changed my perspective a little bit. And, you know, and just touching back on the aspect of coachability, um, you know, I'm not, you're not going to tell me how to block somebody, right, as an offensive lineman, just as like, I'm not going to tell you how to build a pitch deck. So, because that's literally what you get paid to do. So, why would I not listen to Melissa Reeves on how to build a pitch deck, right? To me, that's absolutely asinine, right? <laughs> why you would have somebody that actually gives you their time. Um, you know, included in this wonderful package that we had and uh, not take advantage of it. Well, thank you. You, you were really an excellent student, I will have to say. Yeah. Um, and thank I you. love, I know, <laughs> I just, I just love what, what you guys are building. I think it's revolutionary and it's going to transform the sports industry. That's, that's what I see here now. And I see a lot of decks. I see a lot of decks. Um, why don't we, for kicks and giggles, Take a look at the original deck because everyone out here, this is a very important thing. Entrepreneurs who are capital raising oftentimes do what I was originally seeing in his deck. They were, go ahead and pull it up. We can go oh, ahead and yeah, share. Sure. Let me go. I'm going to pin you for a second here. So, okay. Up. So here, yes. Yeah, so here's the original deck and you don't yeah. even know what it is yet. Okay. We kind of know what it is there. Mm -hmm. Very dark, very small pictures, lots of words. Actually, go yeah. Just go back a little bit. Can you go back to that one uh, team slide real quick? Okay, that one's okay. Go to the next one. That one. Okay. No one. I mean, these are impressive people on the advisory board. And if you are in a verbal presentation, we would not have time to read this. 
Okay. We'd see it and we might be able to recognize people, but all those words make it difficult in a fast pitch in a, in a pitch where you're leaving this behind with someone, or you have them around a table and you're totally controlling what they can or cannot see in the presentation. This could be fine. I'd probably still encourage logos, more logos uh, for, cause you can read a logo without having to read. And that's Correct, what we want to yeah. do with, with pitch decks. You probably heard me say that a couple of times. Yeah. I don't want to have to read it. Yep. <laughs> so more so picture, it was dark and then you can color. just kind of keep going. Um, yeah. So then we started to play more of the story fruition angle. And that was to paint a mind movie, get, get people to, to get into a football game. Let's get them into the stadium. Let's get them excited. We're here for Super Bowl. You know, we're all in Phoenix. And mm-hmm. so this next slide deck is what you went with for your 99 seconds, which I would like to say you were the winner of the competition that night. And how about a how about a little challenge, Debeer? Oh, want to a- do it? Want to try to do a ninety nine again? Again, let's do it. Okay, I'm going to have my timer on. This is how it works, y'all, when you're working with us. Um, so it's really nice, as you said. It's good to have a, a quick deck. Yeah. You don't have to dump all the data on a person who's just trying to get to yeah. know you. It's sort of like dating. You know, you want to present your best self, but not everything about you right away. Oh yeah. And, oh yeah. Right. So slowly, this is what we're trying to do: more pictures. Crazy. Sorry? Slowly unearth the crazy. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, control the crazy. Yeah. So already you can see we wanted to bring the pictures up and we want people to know what they do even before you your mouth starts to move. Okay. So you can already see we're showing the product right away. So why don't we do this? Um, I got my timer on. Okay. And when you start talking, De Beer will start getting timed. <laughs> All right. Let's see how you do. You ready? Yep. <clears throat> Let me just make sure the slides are functioning. All right, here we go. Okay. It's Super Bowl Sunday, and the crowd is absolutely electrified. You cannot even hear somebody chew popcorn in your ear next to you. All you hear is a complete static white noise. And all the coach wants to do is call the play to the quarterback, but he can't hear. Hold on, time out for a second. It does not have to be that way. Introducing our Miller technology. No more sign stealing, miscommunication, confusion, or anything like that. Now you have direct coach to player communication, instant in real time with on demand data. The technology sports a three tier communication protocol security layer that allows you to have your play calls from the tablet directly to a player's wrist. We sell the hardware along with a subscription model that is renewed annually. We are currently focused on NCAA baseball and will expand into NCAA football and softball next. Then we will focus on high schools as well as club teams and travel teams around the country. We have sold to several major colleges around the country, several dozen by now. And also in year, in month one, we have exceeded our entirety of 2022 sales. Additional market opportunities. Imagine that at any given moment, you can communicate without satellite or radio channels whatsoever. Imagine you can ping directly from a tablet to a wrist receiver. Our Miller technology has already engaged with several military institutional factions because of its ability to function completely independently. We are currently raising $2 million, mainly focused on our supply chain and marketing. You can book a meeting with my QR code here. Thank you. Oh, 139. Oops. Whoa. It was 139. I was like, come on, man. You're going to get it. You got to get it. <laughs> you did it. Brilliant. That was great. Brilliant. That was great. Wow. Okay. Yeah. First Good time job. Do it since uh, what Friday? What day was the Super Bowl? It was on a Sunday. <laughs> no, I know. But the, we did the pitch deck the Friday before. It was about two weeks ago, I'd say. Yeah, it was about two weeks ago. But it came so far and you can just, I mean, every picture and every slide, you were telling a story. Exactly. And And that's why it's easy to remember. Exactly. And that's what people are going to remember. They're going to remember your story far longer than any pie chart that you could ever give to them. Mm -hmm. But in a larger, longer, more intensive meeting where someone's really looking under the hood, you've got to have the slides that have data on them as well. It's just a balance, though. So there's really no reason why you cannot use this to start your larger deck, right? Agreed. Yeah. 
Yeah, because so, then afterwards you work into your analysis of the market, you work into your different aspects of how you go to market, your marketing strategy, and also the actual technology demonstration where I run through you know, an application and actually demo the product to individuals too. Well, if you have the honor, if you're interested out there in learning more about this because you want to invest, I mean, when you showed me a quick demo of, of, the, of the technology, it got even better. So- You pulled it up, you had the the little iPad thing, and you're like, Melissa, have you ever called a football play before? I'm like, no. (laughs) And then you put that on my arm. And it's really cool because it absorbs sweat, right? And it has, it's like we can block. Yeah, it's like a regular wristband that you would wear. And uh, this is the football version. You just open it up, read your play, cover it up. It's impact resistant, it's safety certified and tested. Uh, Gone through all the nitty gritties and uh, the certification processes that it needed to. And uh, yeah, this is our version one of go-to-market. That's a very, very good communication system. Like I said, up to 200 yards worth of range functions completely independently. So you do not need Wi-Fi, cellular, or Bluetooth to communicate. Uh, three-tier security layer. Um, it, it's just really, really cool tech. Only took us two and a half years to develop through a pandemic. That was super fun. <laughs> oh, well, hey, you took that pandemic time and really put it to good use because, I mean, it was so amazing because I was like, okay, I, I want to do a fl- play. And then you said, like, there's just all these different channels. So we were on the offensive channel and you're like, what do you want to play? I'm like, oh, Hail Mary. And then oh, you're yeah, like, on two. Them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, on two. And I push it and then zzz, it, it buzzes and I look over and there it is. And so all the players, all of that, all that white noise sound of the game. I liked your popcorn line, by the way. I think you threw that in. <laughs> that was a new one I threw in. Got to adjust on the fly, right? That's right. But that's the fun part about storytelling is that like, once you have your core story, you can play with it as much as you want. I mean, entertain yourself as much. Just make sure you're staying on course. Um, course. But it was really, really wild and powerful. And, and, you know, because you played football, you knew what it needed. Mm-hmm. I, I do. Especially in, I mean, you look at the baseball area, how... It's really got a bad rap with all the signal stealing. I mean, the players from the Houston Astros were targeted. Pitchers were purposely throwing them with the balls, um, you know, because of the cheating factor that took place. Now, I will say this. They're the only team that got caught, truly, uh, because we have colleges. uh, (laughs) Somebody came off and said, uh, hey, why aren't you stealing the opponent's plays? Like, why aren't you? able to pick off their signs. Why don't we know what they're going to do? Well, hey, it's because they're using our military technology and you can't actually see what it is that they're doing. There are no signs that they're using whatever, right? So now if you want to have a lot of fun with it, you just put somebody out there that's a dummy and does whatever, has no signs whatsoever that actually correspond to what we are calling. So that's the other part that you could do is make it really fun that way too. Wow. Now, I think one of the normal questions is, is, well, is this legal? Like, how how are you getting this to go through? Right. So uh, there's different market opportunities, right? And it's kind of like a Wild West out there. Some, um, And it's very, very hard to keep track of everything regarding each state. So there are 50 states and 51 areas, because that includes D.C. as well, that rolls up under what we call the NFHS, National Federation of High School Sports. You also have the NCAA, National Collegiate Athletic Association, that oversees all the colleges, right? And so they have all the different departments, one for football, one for basketball, one for softball, volleyball, et cetera, et cetera, as uh, they go through all their sports as well. And so what has happened ever since the last, let's just say, right, three to five years is, wow, there's a lot of media time. How do we condense um, the game, right? Okay, well, let's make it quicker by instilling a pitch clock. Okay, well, you know, by the time that they get the ball and they get the sign in, they've got about all but 2.0 seconds to throw that ball, which gives them very little time and it really throws off their ability to communicate. So what happened instead was we said, all right, you know what, use our device and uh, it's going to speed up your communication. And so uh, in one of our beta tests, we had our device run out there It was from release of the ball to release of the ball. Not from, hey, I I got the ball, I reloaded and pitched. It's from release to release. It took all but 13.25 seconds to do. 
it was lightning fast. Wow. And so now they're on a 20 second pitch clock when the uh, ball uh, is reset back to the pitcher and uh, he gets back on the mountain. It's a 20 second clock that he has to throw the ball. Football in the NCAA world is trying to speed up the game tremendously too. And how are they going to do that? Well, I wish there was a solution for that too. So, uh, and luckily, you know, you want to talk about investors. Luckily, we have a patent pending on our utility as well, which means that nobody can come in and do what we're doing in the spectrum that we're doing it. It's groundbreaking and it's bringing sports to the 21st century, right? I mean, sometimes we don't realize, this is why I love entrepreneurs because that, that they, they fix something that's broken or they add something that's ready for it, or they come up with something that no one's thought of before. Which group do you think you are? Um, I, you know what? There were some prior ideas regarding this, some former patent applications, but what makes our product significantly different than anybody is the fact that we have a proprietary communication protocol that runs with our device, which means that, you know, what you see in front of you like this outside of our device does not exist. So in other words, you cannot try to replicate this with using another device because one, you will be infringing on our patents, but also and more importantly so is we've developed this specifically to enhance the game in all aspects that we potentially thought that we could. And we did so with the idea of really restoring integrity in the game more than anything, because now you can't steal signals and you are going to help speed up the game, which in turn hopes to bring more fans back to the game. And lastly, is we are so focused around technology as of late that you know adding tech to the game is absolutely inevitable. Right. It is just inevitable and it continues to move faster the more we go along. I mean, and baseball, to be quite frank with you, is one of the largest components about technology and data analysis. You should see the hundreds of rows of data there is on each and every single player that plays this game. It is almost ridiculous to try and figure out who is a good player based on all this information. You know, it makes it extremely difficult for people to just try and make a basis out of it or understand, you know, hey, this player is good, what makes him good, and try to go from there, right? And so if you really want to focus on the improvements and um, of each player respectively, Bringing, bringing the technology back into it allows us to assist with that process too. Data is everything. So you have, you have, you have a lot of data that the coach can use even in the like half, half time, right? They can get yeah, information. So, yeah. When, and you have an advantage because you got to see it in person, right? So we, what we did is, and I'm going to try to build a visual as much as possible is within our application, you can add results as you go along. And those results can then be broken down at halftime uh, which will give you a halftime report. That halftime report will tell you what play you ran, how many times you ran it, and what your average result is. And so now you can start scrolling through and say, hey, here are my inside zone plays and my outside zone plays. Which is better? All right, well, we ran more outside zone for more yards, and uh, we should probably continue to do that because they're stopping us in the inside zone. They've got some really big boys in the middle that we can't move. So let's run side to side and run around them instead. Well, that's very helpful because, you know, you're going to win. And so you can set up your run game that way. And so now it gives you the ability to interpret your data in real time as well. That is amazing. I mean, that is just that's taking the science to the game and, and applying it to make it work. So bravo. Just bravo. Yeah, I'm so excited. Um, Armilla, the name. What's it mean? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that. So back in ancient Roman times, Armilla was an armband that they used to give Roman legionnaires for bravery and combat, sort of like you would a medal of honor in today's time, right? And so with that uh, came this, and it's a golden piece that they used to attach on the upper arm. I don't know if you can see me very well, but on the upper arm, they used to put it right here. And so you can actually go Google this and you'll see it. And so what, uh, what we thought, why it was so applicable, and this was Lance that found the name, um, you know, we're taking an armband into battle and uh, you've got to go show your, your bravery. And that's what sports really stems from is from battle back in the day, right? Most sports, you look at rugby, um, you look at football, you look at, um, you know, throwing implements. Most of those implements, javelin, those were spears back in the day. 
shot puts, those were, you know, rocks that people threw at other people back in the day. I mean, we were some primal things, weren't we? <laughs> but, Lions you know, the, yeah, yeah. yeah, very. But at the end of the day, all sports stem from some form of warfare. And, uh, you know, you're taking your, your armband into battle. And so their name, Armula, stemmed from that. It's beautiful. I love it. I love it. Now, you went on to win. You you won the competition, and it was some good competition. You know, we had yeah. we had Jordan Babineau and Ken Hamlin with uh, the Arrival Cigars. Jordan has his program called Pivot to Win, which is helping athletes go from athlete to entrepreneur. We had the amazing um, uh, Sarah Wells, an Olympian who is now a motivational speaker and helps with executive leadership, and then Dave Anderson, who uh, had a very interesting thing with data for the athlete to be able to keep because he said data is like your resume. That was really um, cool. It actually gives athletes control of their own data rather than everybody utilizing it for you, kind of in a Web3 version yeah. of what it is that he's developing. And I love that concept because you get to control that. Um, I was, what was interesting was the very first thing one of the guys said was, well, co now coach can say, hey, why didn't you sleep eight hours last night? You know, <laughs> so yeah. the guy's like, oh, maybe he might know too much. Uh, yeah. But uh, I think <laughs> right. it's really cool for you to be able to manage your own data and have access to it. And hey, everybody else uses this. Why can't I? Right. Exactly. And so to me, it was one of the coolest ideas out there to really give you the power uh, to be able to work through that, too. That's awesome. Well, we're hoping to get him on here too. But anyways, it was a great lineup. You won. And then I guess I just want to share, or maybe you can replay what you said. So you're not from here. No. And you you came up and just said the most beautiful, most humble and gracious thank you. Do you want to kind of share like how you felt at that moment when you won? Yeah, um, I'm kind of getting the goosebumps all over again because it was it was a little bit of an emotional response, but you know, when Nick Hughes, uh, the CEO of Founders Live, said um, Founders Live is about connecting individuals with great ideas towards people that have the potential to fund them and a big networking event. And, you know, there there are over 40 different chapters across 100, no, 100 different chapters across 40 different cities, excuse me that they have launched now in the idea of building this, right? And to me, it's one of the coolest principles because it, and what he said was, it gives everybody an opportunity. I'm a born and raised South African kid. If this idea would ever come across my lap in South Africa, there would be zero chance of it succeeding at all. Um, and what Nick said was something that truly resonated with me. This is truly a land of opportunity where you can come and bring something like this to the table and make a difference, you know, and I'm not, I'm not talking about, you know, saving somebody's life. I'm talking about making just something a little bit better, having purpose, have meaning behind it. And uh, I, I will be forever grateful for that opportunity. Yeah. Well, we're glad to have you. You're, you're, you're very welcomed and thank you for what you are bringing to the world. This is why, again, I love entrepreneurs is that they really are, in my opinion, the artists of the business world. And we're all in business in something, but, but the entrepreneurs have a vision and they tell that story and people glob onto that story. And then it starts getting momentum. And then more stories start to gather as clients start to use the, the vision that they were doing. And it's just really beautiful. And you've got to orchestrate it. You've got to have a game plan. You've got to have strategy, you know, but you've got to paint the picture. Yeah. And storytelling is a key part, key point to that. So I just want to thank you. Thank you so much for being on the vlogcast. Great job. Good wow. luck. Well, May yeah. anyone out there that's interested in this find, how can they find you? What's the best way to find you? Um, honestly, give me a call. My number is 520-255-2318. If I don't okay. answer, I'm probably on the other line. Um, you know, I look, here's here's the deal. I don't waste time trying to, you know, uh, here's here's this person's, here's my email. Uh, send it to me. I'll be, no, don't do that. Like I, I really don't waste time. I get to the point and I do it fast. I need it. And here's the reality. I need a supply chain solution now. I need a marketing solution now. In the entrepreneurial world, you got to move fast and you got to make decisions quickly. You can't hesitate and you can't uh, take months to make a decision either. You got to do something. You got to have a plan and you got to execute. And then you follow that plan and you stick to your guns, right? As they would say. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I will say this, Melissa, you, your input has been absolutely tremendous and it really helped me take a new perspective 
where it's pitching, you know, stop focusing so much on the data, 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 right? Because at the end of the day, what we do in business is make data-driven decisions. Right. But the truth of the matter is that a lot of people actually invest into folks rather than they invest into a product because you can you can take a really successful product and uh, have the terrible people drive it and it's not going to do well. Or you can have an average product and an average idea with exceptional people and they can do anything. Um, enterprise rental car is one of those examples. One of the best examples, truly, because, uh, and I really do encourage anybody to go read about the enterprise story. Um, the individual who launched it had failed several business ideas. And how can I enhance a customer experience? That was their only goal. How can I make a customer happy? And they didn't know what the business model was yet because they failed three times until they got into the rental services. People were absolutely wowed by their customer service. And till this day, I use enterprise for that reason, is their customer service is unmatched, right? And so when you buy or rent a car from enterprise, you don't just rent a car, you rent a service. And uh, to me, it's the same principle behind investors is we're buying a person's intuition, a person's drive, a person's work ethic and things like that. And if that ain't enough for them, I also have a ton of subpar jokes that they can run along with. So. <laughs> well, really good, really good. Um, you're gonna be great and, and thank you again. So everyone, please enjoy this. And if you enjoyed this and think this was really interesting, pass this along, pass this along. Let's help De Beer, you know, with his vision grow because it's going to revolutionize sports. All right. Thank you, everyone.